Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Naples Zoo. My name is Tim. I'm Tim Tetzloff, Director of Conservation here at Naples Zoo. Uh, I'm responsible for about 35 of our conservation programs, uh, both locally and around the world. And this morning, we're going to be talking about Florida Panthers. So, Kelsey, uh, with our PR department, is going to give you a nice close-up view of Athena. So, if you haven't met Athena in person, uh, she is a fabulous cat. Uh, she's a Florida Panther. She was actually born in June of 2017 inside uh, Big Cypress National Preserve. Uh, so she's got kind of a difficult story, so we're very glad she's uh, doing so well here. When she was born, she was part of a litter of four cats, uh, four kittens, and at some point mom decided she was going to move the litter. And she moved three of the four and left Athena behind. Uh, so there were some biologists that were aware of what was going on with this particular den site. Uh, so they were monitoring the den to see if mom was going to come back and collect Athena and move her as well. Uh, when it became clear that she was not going to move this cat, uh, they managed to get her uh, and take her close to mom's new den site. Uh, little Athena was, was calming away, but uh, mom ignored her. So the biologist made the, made the decision to bring her in. And so uh, brought her here to Naples Zoo, and she got some, uh, some great care early on. She was just uh, about two and a half, three weeks old at that point. There's a wonderful panther behavior down at the water drinking. Uh, and so uh, she's been here ever since. Uh, we decided that we were going to give her a permanent home here at Naples Zoo. Uh, back in 2015, we opened this space to assist the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, as well as U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, in uh, the recovery of the Florida Panther and their conservation. So we have both this, uh, this space for cats that come in from the wild, uh, as well as a temporary rehabilitation space behind the scenes. Uh, and we've had five cats uh, make their way uh, through this facility uh, since 2015 when we opened up. So uh, a lot of people are curious about Athena. She is, uh, like I said, she was born in June of 2017. Uh, and so she's coming up on her third birthday this summer. Uh, she is currently 85 pounds, which is right in the sweet spot for a female panther. They weigh between 70 and 100 pounds. Uh, the male's a bit more than that. The males are larger. Uh, and uh, currently she gets a, a varied diet. A uh, uh, few pounds of uh, carnivore diet, chicken. Uh, once a week she gets a quail. Uh, and then she also gets bones as well, as do the other carnivores here. They enjoy working on those bones. And in fact, in uh, fantastic path panther fashion, uh, she also is caching. She's uh, storing those bones. So the keepers uh, do their best to find out where those are. Uh, so we maintain a clean environment for her. But she, uh, she is all panther. So uh, an obvious question is why uh, she has to be here versus being returned to the wild, because there are some panthers that are able to go back into the wild. Uh, and that's a very simple uh, explanation. Uh, panthers need about six months with their mom uh, to learn how to be a panther. So if they're under six months, they have not had mom's tutoring to understand uh, how to hunt, what to hunt, uh, how to live out in nature. And so uh, any cats that are under that six month window uh, will typically find their way to one of the accredited zoos in Florida. Uh, and then if the cats are over six months, when something happens to mom and they're orphaned, uh, there have been numerous cases where uh, they'll go to a, an incredible facility north of Jacksonville called White Oak Conservation. Uh, and uh, they have spaces there where they are not around people. They've got a varied feeding schedule different locations where they're fed and they learn how to be panthers away from people so they don't get habituated uh, and then they can be successfully returned to the wild. So that's uh, that's all good stuff. Uh, so I was wondering if we could uh, go to some questions real quick. Uh, let's see if I can pull this up. We do have one already. Okay, fire away with that question. Brooks wants to know if she will get any bigger. Uh, she is full grown at this size. Uh, so a lot of people think of the big cats and they think about a tiger, something that weighs, you know, 350 to 500 pounds. Tigers are getting bigger than that. Uh, but for Florida Panthers, she is an adult female size. Like I said, uh, she's right in the sweet spot. 70 to 100 pounds is average for a female Florida Panther, and she's 85 pounds. Uh, out west, they will get larger. Uh, <laughs> so the Florida Panthers are a little smaller in size. 
And in fact, uh, just to answer that question, uh, Florida Panther, Mountain Lion, Puma, Cougar, they're all the same species of cat. Uh, they just have different names in different places where they live. So yeah, if we have any questions, be happy to answer those. And then we're also, of course, gonna talk about how you all can help save panthers out in the wild while you're out there driving. Uh, so another question was uh, proximity to Athena and can the keepers get close to her? So uh, she uh, works really well with our animal care staff. Uh, and in fact, like uh, almost all of the animals here, uh, she is in a training program. And so what that does is it enables uh, them to willingly participate in their medical care. And so, there she's running around. Uh, so yes, for training purposes, uh, she's in process of getting injection trained. So when we need to give her any vaccinations or shots of any kind, uh, that she will actually present her uh, flank uh, up against the mesh and actually will push in and she can uh, either get hand injected or push the needle in herself, depending on how that training uh, winds up. So uh, that's part of the process. Obviously you need to be close for her. Uh, also other things uh, as far as her going down, uh, laying down uh, in front of the keepers, going up, and that will enable us to get a better look at her full body. Uh, so there's a variety of things that you need to be uh, close for uh, to, uh, to do all this training to assist in her medical care. But that's always separated by a barrier. Uh, so they're never sharing the same space with her. Thank you, Kathy, for that question. Uh, good to hear from you. Uh, had the joy of taking Kathy to Africa a few years ago. So appreciate that. And how fast they can run. Uh, these are excellent jumpers uh, and they are very fast runners. Uh, one of their primary prey is deer. Uh, so they can definitely go over 30 miles an hour when they're running. Uh, an exact speed, I, I don't know if we've got uh, full tracking on that, but because their, their prey runs so fast, they can definitely do that as well. Some of their top prey items uh, are the white-tailed deer. Uh, they also go after hogs, uh, where those are out there. Some of the feral hogs, that have, uh, invasive species that were introduced to the country. Uh, but they also go after a lot of small mammals as well. Uh, a lot of raccoons uh, will show up in their diet in, in the wild as well. So uh, dinner here uh, for Athena. Uh, like I said, she gets a varied diet. Uh, there's a prepared carnivore diet. It's a commercially prepared diet. So it has all the proper mix of nutrients, uh, just like you'd have in a wet uh, cat food that you'd get for your domestic cat at home. Uh, and she could survive on that alone. It's got everything that she needs, uh, just like that wet cat food for your, for your domestic cat. However, uh, we also give her uh, chunk, uh, chunk beef as well as chunk chicken. Uh, and then I mentioned the bones as well. So she gets uh, a variety of things there. Hey, Luke Hunter. Uh, Dr. Hunter was just here last week. Uh, great to see you on Facebook Live here. Dr. Hunter uh, is one of the world's leading experts on big cats. Uh, so his question is, uh, didn't the Florida Panthers almost go extinct and how are they doing now? So excellent question. Uh, so yes, uh, when I was a boy, we had about 10% of the Panthers that we do now. So uh, we've had a, a very good trajectory in these cats coming back around. Uh, a big part of that beyond just basic protection and awareness uh, involved the genetic restoration that was carried out in 1995. So they brought in animals because these animals have been isolated for about a century. And so there were inbreeding issues. There were reproductive issues. There were heart issues, things that just were not healthy for them uh, to be coming around in uh, a healthy population. So they brought in these eight uh, females from Texas uh, and that provided some genetic integration, took care of some of those inbreeding problems. And with that taken care of, the population began to rise. So uh, there's a term called the leaning J and so it's like you take the letter J and kick it on its side a little bit. And so the short side of the J is where you would see a population declining and heading towards extinction. And luckily we did not hit that. Uh, there were about 20 to 30 cats uh, for the Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission states. Uh, and from that low point, we started recovery. And so as they recover, you start to see more cats, but then you also have some conflict issues that arise. 
they start showing up more around our neighborhoods. Uh, they'll have more that show up on the cattle ranches uh, and in places like Golden Gate Estates. Uh, they'll even wander through suburban, uh, suburban neighborhoods. Uh, and so right now, with that recovery, uh, we need to be very cautious and careful about how we interact with these cats uh, to make sure that we're helping everybody understand how to live with these cats and be safe around them. Uh, so some of the simple things are, if you're attracting wildlife to your backyard, either by the way you plant or, or, or don't maintain certain areas and you'll have a lot of deer coming in, well, if you have deer coming in, panthers are gonna go after those animals. So there's some smart things you can do to be safe around panthers. And in fact, uh, a great resource that the zoo has put together is at uh, www.thefloridapanther.org. It's important you have the, the Florida Panther in there. Uh, TheFloridaPanther.org not only has a uh, eight-minute documentary that will get you up to speed on everything going on with panthers now, uh, but also has resources for how you can safely live with panthers here in South Florida and beyond because these animals are actually moving north in the state. Uh, we've got females that have moved further north than they have in the last uh, 40, 50 years, uh, and males have been seen in a variety of places north in the state and even as far north as Georgia. So panther recovery is uh, moving on an upward trajectory, uh, but it has a lot of things still to happen, and we need to make sure we're taking care of the landowners, both the ranchers and the agricultural folks, to make sure that uh, we're not leaving all of the burden on them, that we provide good ways of compensation for when they do kill calves, uh, as well as just working around these animals. Let's see what other questions we have out there. Penny, who's eight years old, wants to know if she's ever gonna get a roommate. Ah. So uh, that is an unknown at this point uh, for cats. Uh, they are solitary, just like uh, the single cat you might have in your house. Uh, so that will depend on discussions with both uh, the state and uh, the federal government as far as another cat that might come in here. So she, she, could, be, uh, she could be by... Uh, by herself, as most adult panthers are, or we might find somebody for her. Uh, that's just something we can't know right now. But, uh, so, a lot of people that like panthers and want to see more panthers in our state and that recovery happen, uh, want to know what they can do to help panthers. So, 60 seconds for panthers. So, uh, this is uh, one of the things we like to highlight here. It's 60 seconds for us, but it's a lifetime for her. And that's based on driving the posted speeds in panther crossing zones. So uh, when you're driving down the road and you see one of these uh, diamond signs that talk about a panther crossing, at nighttime, typically the speed drops from 60 to 45. If that panther crossing was as much as three miles, if you go from 60 down to 45, it feels like you're just dragging. However, uh, you're just velocitated and uh, you're only adding 60 seconds to your drive. So it's just one extra minute for you, but by dropping to that 45 mile an hour speed, you're actually able to have just a little bit more time. So if a panther comes on the road or any other wildlife jumps on the road, uh, you have just a little bit more time to hit the brakes, hopefully save that animal's life, and of course not do injury to your vehicle as well. So a uh, big thing for that uh, is you can actually make that commitment and get one of these stickers for your car. So you can put a sticker on the back of your car that shows your commitment to Panthers. So go to panthercrossing.org, uh, and so you can go there right now, sign up. Uh, you can make the commitment online, and then you just fill in this form and mail that in to Naples Zoo with a uh, stamped envelope. All the information is there on how to do that, and we will send you one of these Panther stickers. That way you can show everybody that you care about cats, you care about a healthy ecosystem because having more panthers uh, is a good way to keep the rest of nature in balance. And so that's what we like to communicate is dealing well with the human wildlife conflict, giving people the tools about how to live with these panthers, especially the people who are out in the estates and other places where panthers live, just enabling uh, the resources, uh, pardon me, providing the resources so all of us can live well with panthers and panthers can live well with us. We're going to give one last check here on Athena, and we're at our 15-minute window, so we certainly appreciate you all tuning in today to, to see Athena. 
and uh, learn about Florida Panthers. And we'll be checking on some of those questions and answering those in text uh, in just the next few minutes. So thank you all very much for tuning in today. And we will see you tomorrow on Facebook Live.